Hey, welcome back here once again as we are at the half. Montana Tech leads by two, 30 to 28, our score here on a Thursday night. Uh, the other games underway in Frontier Conference action tonight. Uh, as of right now, Northern, well, let me get this updated. We should be all at the half right now. Uh, Northern leading Rocky 40 to 36 in Billings at the half. And uh, Western up over Providence 40 to 35. That second half is already underway. Uh, so Western up by five, but Providence chipping away at that lead because the first time we saw it was about 12, wasn't it? It was. You know, uh, it's, it's that time of year where every game is so big and you got Northern uh, really and Tech trying to figure out who's going to Northern can still win this thing the way they're playing I w it wouldn't surprise me but right now the uh, Tech really would like to see them lose one because it makes life easier but Tech yep. Tech's going to struggle if they don't come out of this gym with a win here tonight. A two-point lead for the Digs, 30-28 to 28 over the Saints. And again, Montana Tech, this is senior night as uh, they have two games left in the regular season. And both are in very hostile environments, one at the University of Providence and then at Northern in the Armory. And uh, really down the wire, the best team at home right now is Northern. I mean, you, uh, you don't want to play that team in the Armory right now. They have just rolled over their last several opponents Absolutely. up there. Absolutely. Well, the nice thing is they all got a neutral court for the tournament, so that's a different world. And that's a different arena. I, I, I disliked that arena totally when I was a fan up in Great Falls. Yeah. They got pillars as big as this building. People can't even see around <laughs> see the game. Well, it does create... You know, the idea of hosting playoff games was a big deal, and it is a big deal when you can get them in front of your own crowd. But now that we're back under one one roof again, uh, it'll be very interesting to see how this year goes. And again, it was uh, put up, and, and all the you know Great Falls did the work, and it will be up to uh, two Great Falls. And uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how we go back to a single venue and see how it does affect how things shake out. <laughs> well, it affects it. You're going to see some upsets. I guess you can classify them as upsets. I never think it's an upset in this conference. But it's it's a lot more difficult because you're not at home. You're staying in motels and hotels other than Providence. They get to stay home, so it's fortunate for them. But they don't practice there. None of these teams get practice. They'll get a shoot-around time and be able to run through their stuff. But it's, uh, it's a different world, and that's when everybody better bring their A game because that's what it's all about. And I, I think the pressure on Montana Tech right now, they're going to these four-team playoffs now for the national tournament. They could really host if they could win out. And yes. It, and, but they got to win their own tournament also. Even if they took second, I think they could probably still host. And, you know, this is uh, honestly a good time to bring that up. A lot of people are, are kind of confused by the few people I've talked to about that. But basically think back to last year when Montana Tech uh, went to Texas and there was a four-team pod, if you will, almost like a super regional. That's what it is. And, and that would uh, – Tech has a really good opportunity to host one of those here on their floor. So what could be a huge possibility for a few more home games after the Frontier Conference Tournament uh, is still very much on the table for Montana Tech. Uh, and the idea of getting three teams are re non-regional more than likely uh, in this area because College of Idaho, number one team in the country, they will have one for sure. Uh, so you kind of look at, all right, well, that's going to eliminate some of the teams out of the Northwest. But uh, to have those four teams here and have a two-day tournament, I'll tell you, we had a ball in Texas, great basketball, and to see some other brands of basketball from around the country could be a really big opportunity for Montana Tech. But they certainly have to take care of business. Yeah, well, that's the same pod they used when I was coaching at Montana Tech, and then they got away from it for years and years and years. and uh, So it, it makes a difference. You go into a neutral court, you're not familiar with everything, but I, I always tell my teams I would. Basket's 10 feet high, floor's 94 foot long, 52 feet wide. Go play, do what we do best, score, play some defense. Well, so as we get ready to roll here in the second half, Montana Tech leads by two. As you take a peek at this, JT, for Montana Tech, what's important to get going in the second half? Well, I'm, I'm really interested. Well, somebody else in this team's got to score besides Bellich. He can't pack them the whole game. I mean, Carroll's going to catch on to that real soon. So their bench has got to come off and play a lot better, and then they've got to get some uh, other people into the scoring column. Uh, I can't believe only three Tech players have scored. We're used to looking at a team that has eight, ten players yeah, score. Yeah, truly. So, again, it just goes back to watching film and breaking it all down and saying, here's what we got to do. Here, and you, you, Third time around, you, this is what this guy could 
brings to the table when he comes off the bench. This is what this one brings. And so it's uh, it's going to be a little bit of a chess game here right now. We'll see what kind of change. I look for Carroll to, to go to the block more than they did. Uh, I think they have an advantage down there, and I look for Tech to get into their offense a lot better. Creshawn Dixon will start things off for the digs as he'll dribble down toward the right wing, puts on the brakes. Belich on the baseline. Instead, he moves it up to Decons. Decons down the left side of the paint, puts on the brakes. Up top, Michael Yore. Three ball, good. Michael Yore enters the scoring column. That is the first time Carroll lost him at the top of the key, and, and they paid a price for it. He can shoot that three. Yore knocks down the deep ball. Montana Tech goes up by five. Hillman around a screen going right. Stops, bounce pass, no one home. Creshawn Dixon, two on one. He'll lob it to Aza Williams. Williams too deep, puts it up, no good. Should have just gave the ball up instead of trying to get the dunk. Carroll Lob College. Lobbed him short. Cook spins. Cook with a right hand. It's up and in. Andrew Cook gets started early. Yeah, I look for Cook to really get involved in the offense. He's their go-to guy. Cook has 10 points on the day. Montana Tech with the ball. Creshawn Dixon. Up top, Michael Ewer moving left. Ewer stops at the elbow. He's going to fire again. This one short defensive rebound hauled in. They made sure they came out and played him that time. They were not going to give him another look. Three-point lead for the digs. Andrew Cook controlling for Carroll College. Cook. Around the screen, down the right side of the paint, puts on the brakes, moves it up top to Hillman. Hillman enters into the high post to Temple. Temple, one-on-one -on -one with Ewer. Temple fights back to his right side. Ball comes out, almost out of bounds. Temple able to track it down. He'll turn and fire, no good. Belich with a rebound. That's exactly what you want Temple doing right there if you're Montana Tech. Let him shoot the three. Creshawn Dixon drives into the paint, needs help, comes out to Belich. Belich has a lane, stops, and puts it up, no good. Gets shoved out of bounds. Carroll College the other way. Andrew Cook into the offensive zone. Cook down by three. Cook into the lane. He's going to fire with a right hand. No good. Dixon will be called with a foul. Yeah, their halftime talk was get him the ball. He didn't, Two minutes he, gone. Excuse me. He, he didn't get involved in the scoring enough in the first half. So Andrew Cook will go to the foul line here for Carroll College. Three-point lead for the Digs. Cook at the line. His first is up and good. So Andrew Cook, 11 points on the day. He's one of three from the foul line. Did I ever tell you scorers always like to score? It's easy to, to defend that. <laughs> it's easy to know who wants the ball. Cook gets the ball for a second and gets it as well. 12 points on the day for Cook. Tech by one. Diggs down the floor. Creshawn Dixon through center court, moving to his right, up around a high screen. Dixon has a lane. Dixon to the rack, gets it in. Dixon's first basket. That was two great screens up above it, just freed him up. Diggs by three. Andrew Cook controlling, sends man in motion. Passes back here on the near side to Moore. Isaiah Moore, a freshman, in the paint. Coke shot is up and good. So Braden gets his first field goal. Yeah, they trailed the curler, curl there, and Cook got wide open. His first field goal, he averages nine a game. Young freshman out of Helena Capital driving. Decons off balance, no good. Got himself caught under the bucket. 240 gone here in this second half. Montana Tech by one. The largest lead we have seen is six. Otherwise, it's been within three basically the entire first half. Hillman, little head fake, Hillman spins back to his right side, lost it, now he'll put up the floater, no good. Temple tips it to Hillman, back to Temple. Fresh shot clock, Cook, Braden Cook, now to Andrew Cook. One on one, Lawrence, now to Hillman. Shot clock at eight, Hillman's gonna fire, it's up and out, and rebound control, Michael Yore. Carroll College with 10 more rebounds than Tech. Hayden Decon's going to slam it home. Nobody picked him up, and Decon's racks it. I was going to say, need a timeout. Got to slow down the momentum. Montana Tech leads by three, 37 to 34 over the Saints of Carroll College. That is a monster play. Decon's gets it and just jams it with both hands. Impressive break. The big number right now, there's a couple here right now. Carroll College has eight turnovers. 
But they have nine more rebounds than Montana Tech. 26 rebounds for Carroll, 17 for Montana Tech so far. Five offensive, 21 defensive rebounds for Carroll College. Saints shooting 43%, Montana Tech shooting 34%. And the big one there, we talk about the difference in rebounds. Tech has 14 more shots than Carroll College already in this ball game. That that number doesn't correlate to me when you no. when you get now out rebounded pretty heavily and you're getting more shots. Something's quite <laughs> wrong. And the turn, I mean, maybe if the turnover number was higher, but yep. Carroll, I mean, Carroll has eight turnovers, which in the second half isn't horrible. It's crazy how no, eight, the mix and match a great there. Number. Yeah, exactly. So a three-point lead for the Digs. Again, thanks for joining us here. Montana Tech Athletics, the final home game of the year. Senior day for the Digs. Celebrating the four seniors. Three on the women's squad, one here on the men's team. Then you go to shooting percentage, and you think Tech has the lead because of that. They don't because Carroll has a better, higher shooting percentage yeah. from the field. Three-point lead for the Digs. 16.35 left to play in the ball game. Carroll College with it. Braden Cook in the backcourt. Dixon on him. Now to Andrew Cook. Cook on the far right wing. Just outside the arc, lost the dribble. Pass comes out to Moore. Moore feeds it on the interior. Temple, head fake, baseline. Temple, double team. Temple fights his way to the rack and gets it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the stronger post player there. Six points on the night for Temple. Tech by one. Belich lost it. Comes out. Turnover, Andrew Cook. Cook the other way. Three on two. Cook, a floater in the lane. Gets it. Carroll has the lead. So Carroll College grabs that momentum back, and the Saints go up 38-37 as they get a steal and a basket out of it. The name of the game is still defense right now. Carroll College leading 38-37. We have a full timeout, so we'll take one. 15-55 left to play in the ball game. We're back here to the Hyper with Montana Tech Athletics in just a few. Fifteen fifty-five left to play here in the ball game. The Saints up 38-37. Frontier Conference action here with Ortiger Athletics. Carroll shooting 47% from the floor. They're 15 of 32. Montana Tech is 15 of 44, shooting 34%. We have seen absolutely no runs by either team yet. Nope. Six points. Isn't that what you said was the farthest? Yep, that's as big as we've been. So whoever gets a, a, a run here of eight to ten points will walk out of here with a win. Western leading Providence in Great Falls, 59 to 44, and Northern leading Rocky and Billings, 40 to 36. Keeley Bake on the floor, out to Lawrence. Lawrence sends Larson, gets it to him. Larson drives hard. Larson pump fake once, twice, shot partially blocked, gets the ball back. And he will be fouled. Got him on the floor. As Guzalosic will pick up the personal. A one-point lead for the Saints. Montana Tech will inbound to Larson. Hand off to Belich. Belich, 17 points. All of those in the first half. Three-point shot. Keeley Bake is in. That's his first basket. Left him all alone in there. They checked him underneath and let him break to the outside. Tech goes up by two. Andrew Cook down the left side of the paint. Puts it up off balance. Late whistle and a foul. And the personal foul is going to go to Cam Lawrence. And that will put Andrew Cook back to the line. Cook, 14 points. Again, the number two scorer in conference right now is Andrew Cook behind Caleb Belich. 
Cooks first, good. He missed his first two, but he's been money since then. He's three of five. Digs by one, 40 to 39 over the Saints. And Cook will get the ball for attempt number two. Cook's second is on the way and good. 16 points for Cook, and we're tied at 40. 15-15 left to play. Montana Tech, Larson left wing. Larson hands it off to Aza Williams. Williams going to drive. Williams looking for his first basket, and he gets it. Yeah, I think I like about him. He gets his body twisted so you can't draw a charge. That's exactly what Carroll tried to do. Williams gets his first field goal. Montana Tech by two. They put the basket on the wrong side. Andrew Cook jump shot is up and in. That kid can play. That he can. Cook has 18 points. The basket, well, there we go, we're going to get a switch. 42 all, pass out on the left side. In the corner, Keeley Bake is up and in. Keeley Bake knocks down the three. They seem to think they don't have to guard him. Montana Tech leading 45-42. Andrew Cook stops, backs it out. Both teams heating up from the floor right now. Braden Cook feeds it inside. Guzalosic, one-on-one -on -one with Larson. Bounce pass. Moore is going to fire from 16. No good. Cam Lawrence with a rebound. Tech by three. Looking to add to that here. Keeley Bake around the screen. Moving left. Wants to come back to his near side. He does. Controlling out there is Belich. Caleb Belich looked at pick and roll. Fires the three. No good. Defensive rebound. Carroll College. 13.50 left to play in the ball game. Andrew Cook to Braden Cook. And they call a timeout. Coach saw something he wants to do. He wants to get a uh, sub in, first of all, but he, he, he saw something. 13.46 left to play in the ball game. We have a full timeout on the floor. The Digs up by three. Let's take a look at our other scores here right now. Let's get an update here. Let's wait for the internet to refresh. Western leading Providence 63-44. to So they've gone back on on an absolute terror. And that's a big one. That's in Great Falls as well. And Northern is down by three now to Rocky. The Batland Bears up 43 to 40. So both of those uh, make uh, Digger fans very happy with where they currently are beyond what's happening on the floor right now. No question about it. Uh, tech coach would really be happy if both Providence and Northern got beat and they win this one. But if they lose this one, if the other two lose this one, it's still wide oh. open. Yeah, the, uh, all the straws are in the air then. As of right now, Carroll shooting 47% from the game. They're 56% from the floor here in the second half alone. Montana Tech on the other side shooting 38% from the floor. They're at 55% from the floor here in the second half. The number of shots is far closer here in the second half. Carroll is 5 of 9, Tech is 6 of 11. There's a huge discrepancy in the number of shots Tech has taken over... Carroll. Tech has 48 shots. Carroll has 34, and Carroll has nine more rebounds than Montana Tech. Balances everything out. The inbound to Andrew Cook. Cook moving to his right, stops, rolls it into the right elbow. Temple gets it. Temple backing it up. Temple back up top to Moore. He has the open three. It's on its way. No good. Rebound tipped. Carroll gets it in traffic. Pass, comes all the way up top to Andrew Cook. Fresh shot clock, now to Hillman. Hillman get a drive, leaves it off underneath the Temple. Temple shot no good, but draws the foul. Great court awareness by Hillman. That's a tremendous dump off to the post player. 13-21 left to play in the ball game. Personal foul to Cam Lawrence, his third. So Lawrence gets his third personal, and Temple will go to the line. He has yet to shoot a free throw here tonight. Temple, his first is good. Temple, a 75% free throw shooter. And as you mentioned earlier, Carroll shoots free throws exceptionally well, both their men's and women's programs. Always have. Maybe that's part of their entrance exam. Well, that and then going to my free throw shooting clinic has really <laughs> helped them. <laughs> Temple's second is up and out, no good. He gets one of two. Montana Tech with a rebound. Digs the other way. Keeley Bake, far left wing. Bake. Enters to Larson. Larson 
Loose double team coming. Off the glass, rolls it in. Bridger Larson with eight points. Tremendous spin move. Four point lead for the Diggs. Andrew Cook, watch that lead elbow. He's kind of flapping it out there. Imani Scott comes up defensively. Cook into the foul line. Moves it up top to Hillman. Hillman around a screen. Stops at the elbow, backs up. Tried to enter, it goes out of bounds off of Tech. Yeah, they had a mismatch down there. Temple uh, on a small. I wasn't sure if they were going to call it a boot or not. They're not adding any time on the play clock, so 10 on the shot clock. The inbound to Andrew Cook, his jumper no good. Hillman with the offensive glass and the putback. Boy, Carroll is just dominating their rebounds right now. They are getting after it on both sides of the floor. Tech by two. And a carry call going to go to Carroll College. That will bring Creshawn Dixon in. That's I can't, that's a call I've been waiting for all year at, at all levels because it feels like the carry is right there, and that's the first time I've seen it called this year. Everybody carries the ball. They get on the side of it. So I think it's a tough call to make. Yeah. Hillman, far right wing. Hillman. Drives into the high post, leaves. Oh, a block call on Aza Williams, and the basket counts. So Hillman gets the basket. He has 14, and he will shoot one. We're tied at 47 all. Do you know how smart he is? He knew he was fouled, and he won, and he got the shot off. He didn't care if it went in or not, which fortunately for him it did. That's, that's a basketball IQ that's off the map. Hillman, chance at a three-point play, no good. Bellich with a rebound. Tied up 47 all. Eight minutes gone. Aza Williams into the lane. Aza shot blocked out of bounds as he got rattled around. Once again, whoever makes the first run is going to be in good shape here, but nobody seems to be shooting the ball well enough. Dixon looking to bring it in. They'll lob it all the way up to Bellich, who gets hammered. No whistle. Bellich. Ball goes to the ground, loose. Carroll College gets it, and I believe got a timeout. No, jump ball call. Going Possession arrow will go to Carroll. <laughs> Fans are happy. <laughs> Welcome the crowd to the uh, situation. I'm not sure the crowd realizes how much they can control this thing. 12 minutes remaining here in this ball game. Larson and Belich will get a breather. Belich, 17 points, leading scorer for the Digs. He has not scored here in the second half yet. Andrew Cook into the zone. Boy, he's got that lead arm up, pushing off. He's got to watch himself. Yeah, both of them got hands on each other. Hillman underneath, no good. Aza Williams grabs a rebound. Physical ball game. Down the floor, running the lane. Decons, no. Huge contact, no whistle. Carroll College the other way. Saints into the offensive zone. Tied up 47 all. Stopped at the elbow, feed into Temple. Temple one on one with Ewer. Temple wants to go left, spins, trying to get it back out. Andrew Cook now with it. Cook spins, ball knocked out, and now Dixon gets the foul. Creshawn Dixon will pick up the personal. So Andrew Cook will go to the line here for the Saints. Cook with 18 points, leading scorer on the floor. Well, if you look at how much he's handling the ball right now, that's exactly what Carroll's game plan was coming out at halftime, give yep. him the ball. He has uh, 11 points this half. Not that big, but he's real physical. He's really tough when he gets you down in the paint. Wingspan, too. I think he's very positive. Like, his arms seem really long. 20 points for Andrew Cook. Saints up by two. Montana Tech with it, full court pressure as they come into the zone. Dixon holds on to it. Imani Scott goes to his right. Michael, you are top of the key. Wide left is Williams. He'll get it. Williams, step back. He has the opening. Three ball is up and no good. Rebound control, Carroll College. Carroll with 10 more rebounds than Montana Tech here in the ball game. Hillman steps through. Floater is up and in. Euro step, great move. 16 points by Johnny Hillman. The Saints by four. That's their biggest lead of the game. Michael Yore hands it off to Williams. Williams looking left to Dixon. Dixon inside to Michael Yore. Yore 
into the double team. Back up top, Williams. Williams attacks. Williams shot, whistle, and a foul. Well, hello there. So Williams will go to the line. Personal foul to Moore. And at the foul line is going to be Creshawn Dixon. Or excuse me, Aza Williams, my apologies. Yeah, Aza Williams. 67% free throw shooter on the year. Two points on the night. And his first is on the way and good. Williams with three points. Montana Tech within three. Belich comes back in after a quick breather. Saints by three. Saints controlling tempo right now. That they are. Williams takes a breath. A couple dribbles, second is on its way, and no good. As Gruzelosic comes away with a rebound, Carroll College the other way. Saints across the timeline, Braden Cook puts on the brakes. Cook moves it up top to Hillman, little head fake. Hillman step back, fires the three, it's up and no good. And grabbing the rebound is Decons. Yeah, Carroll had a three-point lead. I thought they'd be a little more patient on offense. Decons out to Belich. Belich into the lane, pulls up and rolls it in. Caleb Belich gets his first basket of the second half. 19 points for Belly. The Saints by one. Nice elevation with that little fallback. There's nothing you can do about it. Braden Cook across midcourts, passes to Moore. Midway point here of the second half. Saints by one. Moore looking left. Cuts back to his right side now. Saints, two guys, middle of the key. Pull-up jumper from the foul line is up and out. Rebound Hillman. And again, Carroll's the only one reacting on that rebound. Hillman, reverse shot, no. Another offensive rebound. Guzalosic, no. Now Michael York gets it. Three-point blank looks. Couldn't knock it down. Carroll College dominating the glass right now. Creshawn Dixon to the lane, big foul. Good call. As Braden Cook, actually no, it's Creshawn Dixon is going to go to the line as taking the foul that time was Rogers. He was inside the halo. He was set, but he was inside the halo, so he got ran over. So Creshawn Dixon, two points so far on the night. And his first free throw attempt is up and good. Dixon, 80% from the foul line on the year. Every time you get a little space between these two, both come back. Tied up, 51 all. Dixon gets the ball for attempt number two. 9-19 left to play in the contest. Dixon's second is up and out. Gruzelosic goes up and gets the rebound. Too many missed free throws by both teams. Montana Tech shooting 55% from the foul line. Carroll College up to 70%, and Carroll will call a timeout. We're knotted up 51 all, 9-10 left to play here in this game. As Frontier Conference action here at the Hyper. Other scores, Western up by 19 over Providence, 73-52. to 52. 21. Come on, there you go. And then from there, the other side, Rocky leading Northern 50-47. to 47. That one still has about 12 minutes left. Uh, but Western starting to run away with it in Great Falls. I'm trying to f figure out what's falling apart at Providence, whether they have have some injuries or, or what. Let's go look here. Let's take a look at the stats for that game. You always look for them to put 80 on the, on the board. Providence is 6 of 17 from downtown. Jake Olson, their leading scorer. Marcus Stevens, Davian Harris-Williams, and Kenny Curtis. So they're big three, if you will, all playing. Stevens has 12 points, it looks like. Harris Williams with eight. Kenny Curtis with five. Sam Bining with eight. On the other side, Jacques Jacques has 17. The big man's doing work. He's shoot, he's shoot, yeah, he's shot five three-pointers, hit yeah, three of them. Wow. He's, yeah, he's, he's a heck of a three-point shooter. Three of five, nine rebounds, four assists. Michael Haverfield has 11. Brenton Woods with 10 for Western. That's a big and 21 point lead for Western over Providence and Rocky up by three over Northern. Welcome to the Frontier Conference. Boy, you never know what's going to happen. How about that? So Carroll looking to inbound after the timeout. Pass comes in to Andrew Cook. Cook leading scorer on the floor with 20. Around a high screen, loose double team, bounce pass to Temple, cross court to Moore. Moore now to Cook, Andrew Cook. 
Cook lost it for just a moment. Spins, moves it out to Moore. Shot clock at two. Moore elevates. Shot is up and good. Big, big shot with the clock running down. Moore with eight points. And the Saints lead by two, 53-51. Creshawn Dixon, ball fake to the edge. Decons. Decons spins. Back out, taking away Moore. Moore with the steal. Down the left side, Moore, ball fake, shot partially blocked, Ordinger basketball. Belich with a great job getting back. And now he'll go the other way. Belich feeds it to Yor, and Yor will finish. What a series by Caleb Belich and a great finish by Michael Yor. He actually had a two-on-one on him, on him down here, and he did a great job at blocking the shot. 53 all, Carroll with the ball. Andrew Cook gets a lane, Cam Lawrence fouls him. Otherwise, that's an easy two. Boy, the lane cleared out, and he had nothing but daylight between him and points. Well, they're trying to get Cook into the paint, and they're playing him clear out here 25 feet, and I don't think they have to. I don't think he's a gr I think he's a good three-point shooter. I don't think he's a great one, but get away from him. Quit trying to play him so tight. Eight minutes left to play. We're tied up 53 all. Frontier Conference action, Ordinger Athletics. We have a timeout on the floor, so we'll take one. We're back here to the Hyper after this. Hey, back here once again, Frontier Conference Basketball with Ordinger Athletics, Paul Penisco, John Thatcher. Eight minutes left to play. We're tied up 53 all. Well, next eight minutes ought to be interesting. Once again, we haven't seen that major run that we're looking for. The Digs right now shooting 39%, Carroll up to 44%. And at the line, Andrew Cook, his first is good. Cook, 21 points, leading score. He missed his first two free throws in the first half, and since then he is seven of seven. Cook, second is up and good. 22 points for Andrew Cook. The Saints up 55-53. Full court pressure. Down the floor, Creshawn Dixon, trap coming. Dixon picks up his dribble, throws it inside to Belich. Belich all the way up top to Aza Williams, out to the wing. Decons, ball fake, baseline, stop. Great move to the rack. Hayden Decons with eight points. He jump stops with the basketball as good as any player I've seen. Tied up 55 all. That means he's got the use of two pivot feet. Andrew Cook directing traffic as he comes into the offensive zone. Pass here on the near side to Braden Cook. To Moore, Moore elevates again, no good. Rebound tipped out, Decons comes out with it. And he'll keep it in play to Dixon. Dixon down the floor to Belich. Belich through the lane, and he will be fouled. So the official on top of it. Talking over whether he was shooting or not. Let's see what they're going to give him. And yep. they will say he's shooting too. Personal foul charge to Temple. That's only his first. And at the foul line, going to be Caleb Belich. 19 points for Belly. His first tier is up and good. Belich, 82% from the foul line on the year. He has 20 points tonight. Diggs back up by one, 56-55. The largest lead we have seen tonight is six. Tech led by six. Carroll is led by five. Belich second is short. Andrew Cook goes up for the rebound. Belich gets one of two, and as you mentioned, Tech, not well from the free throw line. They're 50%, 7 of 14 from the foul line tonight. Braden Cook, switch dribble up top to Andrew Cook. Seven minutes left to play. 
Andrew Cook to Temple, right elbow. Temple takes a step back. Andrew Cook, follow-away jumper, no good. Decons goes up for the rebound. Rebound number seven for Decons. Aza Williams squares up, three ball is good. He was due, they left him all alone. They've been guarding him real strong tonight. Nobody got to him on the break. Good job of pushing the ball by Tech. Aza Williams, six points all here in the second half. The digs by four. Braden Cook, a freshman across the foul line. Moving left, down the left side of the paint, stops. Needs help, puts on, out to Andrew Cook. 6.20 left to play in the ball game. Andrew, double team, stops, turns, right hand, new. And fighting for the rebound is Temple. Temple puts the shoulder down, offensive. Absolutely, that's a great oh. call. Temple doesn't like it, but that's, a, that's the correct call. He lowered his shoulder yep. just like playing football. Boy, Michael, you are has taken some shots tonight. <laughs> well, you know, he's not beefy like these other post players. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do, you sacrifice for the beauty of the team. <laughs> Montana Tech by four into the offensive zone. Six minutes left to play. Michael Yore at the left elbow, hands it off to Decons. Decons, double team, almost had it stripped away. Now to Yore on the right wing, to Belich. Back to Michael, Ooh. and Yore give and go. And Yore has seven points, nice assist by Belich. Great slip, faked the screen and went directly to the basket. And I tell you, that takes, Belich can see over everything because of his size. Six point lead for the Diggs. Their biggest lead of the second half, matching their biggest lead of the night. Moore, shot blocked, Michael Yore. Down the floor to Belly. Belly will slam it home. There's your first run of the game right there. 22 points for Caleb Belich. Montana Tech by eight, their biggest lead of the night. 5.31 left to play here in the ball game. As it looks like the officials chatting to players as things getting a little vocal on the floor as one might imagine. Yeah, when you're in the heat of the battle, it's uh, pretty easy to open your mouth at the wrong time. Technical here isn't going to do either team any good. Yeah. Western beat Providence 87-65, to so Providence loses a spot. And Rocky leading Northern 58-53 in Billings. That has 7 minutes and 20 seconds left, so a lot of game time left there. But Providence losing at home to Western. Uh, that is a big one as far as the top of the Frontier Conference pile goes. No question about it. Providence was right in the hunt, right up on top. Now they're, I think, was that two them. or three in a row. Yeah, it's, that is a, not a good situation for them. So that certainly is a big one. If Montana Tech is, to, is able to escape with us with a win, that removes Providence from the equation. They're gone. And we'll see what happens with Northern and Rocky. If Rocky holds on to beat Northern, then it, that's the deal. Well, that'll guarantee Tech at least a tie for first, correct? If, if Tech wins and, and Rocky wins, that puts them three games up with two games left to play. It's over. That's it. Braden Cook into the offensive side. Cook spinning up top, looking to get it to Moore. He'll move it out to Temple, back to Braden Cook. Top of the key to Hillman. I want to shoot some threes. Lobs it into Temple. Temple bodied up, turns, fires. His shot is no good, but he'll shoot a pair. Strong, strong post player. Yeah. He's one I, I've really liked for Carroll through the years. He's a senior. He has just really battled, and especially, you know, you think about the battles that he has had over the last several years with Taylor England. We have certainly seen some brawls out of those guys. Temple, first is good. Eight points out of Temple. Free throws just became extremely important for both teams. Carroll shooting 75% from the line. Montana Tech, 50% from the free throw line. Second is up and out, no good. Bellich with a rebound. Got to make your free throws in the last five minutes. Tech into the offensive side. They lead 63 to 56. Bellich. Lobs it into the high post, too much. Carroll College the other way. Larson unable to go up and get it. Carroll will bring it into the offensive side. Braden Cook dribbling right to Moore. 4.45 left to play here in the ball game. Diggs lead by seven. Temple spins back to his left. Sky hook is up and in. He is 
strong. Physical, physical play in the paint here. Carroll College has 36 of their 58 in the paint. Big possession for Tech right here. Five-point lead for the Diggs. Bake inside to Larson. Larson, one pump fake, moves it back out to Williams. Aza Williams around a screen. Step back. Three-pointer is up, and three-pointer is out. Rebound Temple. Temple to Hillman. Back to Cook. Saints down by five. Chance to chip away. Braden Cook to Hillman. Hillman on that far right wing, little shake and bake. Wants the baseline, pass out to the wing. Braden Cook, three-point shot is good. Boy, he was left wide open, and Braden Cook is a guy you can't leave wide open. He has five. Tech leads by two. So much for the run. That's it. 63-61, the digs by two over the Saints with 3.52 left to play. Carroll College shooting 42% from the floor. Montana Tech at 43% from the floor. Carroll still with 10 more rebounds than Montana Tech. They have 10 offensive rebounds. Carroll with eight turnovers. Montana Tech with six turnovers here in this contest. Crazy ball game. Again, the largest lead was eight points that we just saw a few moments ago. Yeah, you know, in the past when we've watched Montana Tech, they've all, always had that go-to post player that could score or or was a great passer inside out and uh, Tech does not have that monster down there like they've had in the past. England was as good as it gets. So a final from Great Falls. Western beats Providence 87 to 65 with five minutes left in Billings. Rocky leading Northern 62 to 58. Tech with a basketball. Hayden Decons. Looking for the back door, Belich gets it. Belich goes and slams it home, and he gets the foul. Belich jams it with two hands, and he'll shoot one. Great play. Coach set up a great back door play. Boy, and he held on to the rock as long as he could as the defender went flying by. Yeah, it looked like he was going to block it. Yeah. He just went, to, went off to his left and said hello. Belich, 24 points. Free throw is up and good. 25 points for Caleb Belich. The digs back up by five. 335 left to play in the contest. Diggs leading 66 to 61. Braden Cook across the timeline to Temple. Temple has your on him. Hand off to Hillman. Hillman down the left side. Comes up top to Moore. Moore now to Temple. Nice cut by Moore, and Moore gets the easy basket. Good job of Temple by finding him. Temple was going to go one-on-one -on, -one on the block. Three-point lead for the Digs. As they come into the offensive side, they'll call out the play. 3.05 left to play. Hayden Decons drives into the paint. In the corner, it goes to Williams. Williams, little stutter step, backing it up. Lost his footing, goes to the ground, travel call. Travel call will go to Carroll College. Got to get into their stuff and run their stuff. It was a little one-on-one -on -one going on there. Too many dribbles. Turnover number seven for Montana Tech on the night. Carroll trailing by three. Will bring it into the offensive zone. Saints. Braden Cook lobs it into Temple. Temple has fought hard here tonight. Temple to Moore. Moore has a lane. Moore shot partially tipped. Still rolls it in. Boy, he has a great first step. 12 points for Moore. The digs by one. I like how they cleared out that area, gave him the baseline drive. 2.25 left to play here in this ball game. Montana Tech leading by one. They have the ball. Keeley Bake, four wide, now five wide for the digs. Michael Ewer to Belich. Belich going to drive the lane, goes up, ball comes out. Tech basketball. Tech looking for a foul. The official eyeballing players here. Well, I said something to the official, yeah. and the official, I heard him say, hey, I could hear it through the <laughs> phones here. 2.15 left to play in the ball game. And now we're going to get a whistle and a foul here. Now free throws are yep. really big. So that is team foul number seven. Both teams are in the one and one. This is how the game's supposed to be played all the time. And at the line is Hayden Decons. So Decons, the freshman, a 62% free throw shooter. He has eight points on the night. 
Decons, front half of the bonus, no good. Rebound, Temple. Montana Tech leaving a lot of points at the foul line tonight. They're 8 of 16. Andrew Cook, pick and roll to Temple. Temple attacks, Temple shot no good. And on the rebound, Michael York gets it. He's shoved down by Temple. And that's going to walk the other way, and Yor will shoot the one and one. Couldn't get a better shot from eight inches, just hit the back of the rim. So the personal foul to Temple is third. All of those here in the second half. And Michael Yor at the line. He's 0 of 2 from the free throw line tonight. He'll yeah. shoot the front half of the bonus. He is, but this is one of the guys you want at the free throw line. At Agreed. End of the game. Yor. And the front half, no good. I guess I'm wrong I, again. I was wrong with you. He's a high percentage shooter, isn't he? That he is. Andrew Cook will bring it across the timeline. Cook around the screen, switch dribble, ball pick taken away. Aza Williams with a steal. Tech by one, 100 seconds remaining. Williams across to Keeley Bake. Bake will set up the offense. Tech by one. Belich comes out to get it. Belly has 25 points, leading scorer on the floor. Belich. Double team coming, feeds it inside to Yor, out to the wing. Creeshawn Dixon for three. Six points for Dixon, Tech by four. A little breathing room, but this is far from over. Big, big monster possession for Carroll here. Hillman across midcourt, two possession ball game. Hillman puts on the brakes, passes right to Temple. Temple spins into the paint, steps back. Now he'll go right side. Temple behind the basket, goes out of bounds. Carroll ball with 11 on the shot clock. Good defense, Mike Yore. Big Mike got him to the baseline, and Temple had nowhere to go. Yeah. Tech doing a good job of forcing the ball out deeper. Carroll looking to inbound. Pass comes in to Braden Cook. Three ball, nope, two on the line. So Braden Cook knocks it down. He has seven points. Tech by two with 54 seconds left. Belich controlling here for the Diggs. Creshawn Dixon to his left, Asia Williams to his right. Mike Ewer comes up to set a screen, now comes off it. 15 on the shot clock. Ewer, as they move it out, Keeley Bake gets it to Belly. Belly, ball knocked away, loose, picked up. Dixon, Dixon drives, ball comes out. Turnover will go to the Saints. Down by two, the shot clock is off. Carroll, Hillman, baseline. Hillman draws the defender. He gets the basket and the foul. So Hillman ties us, and he'll have a chance at the end one. Intelligent play by Johnny Hillman. He brought the defender off his feet, leans into him, gets the basket and the foul. You got to take care of the basketball, and that's a text. That's their M.O., and they turned it over two times in a row here. 69 all. Hillman will shoot one with 21 seconds remaining here in this ball game. And lots of time. You're going to get the yeah. last look. Ton of time remaining here in this ball game. So again, Western beat Providence. The other game in Billings, Rocky up over Northern, 65 to 58 with under two minutes left. So we could see possibly all three of the top teams going down here tonight. Crazy, <laughs> crazy basketball league. <laughs> we thought we thought tonight might give us a little breathing room, and boy, were we wrong. It's yeah. going to tighten things up even more. 21 seconds remaining here in this contest. Thanks for joining us here with Ordigger Athletics. Paul Panisco, John Thatcher. The final game of the regular season as the Frontier Conference Tournament will be played in Great Falls. All up to four seasons. Going to be a good one to watch. And it will. So as the teams come out here, again, Johnny Hillman will shoot one free throw for the Saints. Hillman, 83% from the foul line. He'll look to give his team a one-point advantage, and then Tech will have the ball with 20 seconds remaining. Well, lots of time on the clock. A ton of time. Let's see what type of play I know who I want with the ball in his hands. Belich, Yor, Aza Williams, Creshawn Dixon, and Keeley Bake on the floor for the digs. And at the foul line, Hillman. Got a box out. So Hillman will get ready to shoot one. The Tech crowd getting loud here now. Hillman, free throw attempt is up and no good. Aza Williams with the rebound. 
Well, they're going to get the final shot. You want to take it too early and give Carroll a chance to get the ball back. Dixon across the foul line. Got to go. Ten seconds. Preshawn Dixon down to eight seconds. Taking too long. Dixon around a high screen. Ball comes out. Loose on the ground. Diving for it. And it's going to be a timeout call with 2.4 seconds remaining. Well, they're going to get a shot off anyway, but he took way too long. you got to start that play at 10 seconds, but not from midcourt. It's got to be down in underneath where you can get some activity going. Heads up play that time by Coach Hyatt as he jumped out and called that timeout with 2.4 seconds. So as you mentioned, Tech will get a shot off. And they'll inbound right at the bottom, bottom left, I guess, from our view of the key. 69 all, 2.4 seconds remaining, the third and final meeting between Montana Tech and Carroll College in the regular season. As we mentioned earlier, the home team has won 19 of the last 21 meetings between these two programs. Tech won in Helena last year in the final game of the year. And Carroll College, let me grab my notes here. Carroll College last one here, January 11th of 2018. This situation is why you get the big bucks to be a coach. You gotta, you gotta get a clean look at the basket. We'll see what uh, Tech's got designed here. Should be easy to get a shot off. So we'll see what they do bring out here. Montana Tech, senior day. Again, they will finish their season on the road at Providence and at Northern. Let's see if we can get another quick update from that game in Billings. Rocky leading Northern 65-58 with one minute left to play. So Western beat Providence in Great Falls. Creshawn Dixon will look to inbound. Carroll will put Guzalosic in front of the inbounder. They're going to lob it into Belich is what they're going to look to do. Creshawn Dixon will inbound. Looking for somewhere to go. The inbound left side, Keeley Bake. One dribble. He's going to fire at the horn. No good. We're going to overtime. Montana Tech and Carroll College will go to an extra five minutes here. 69 all. Good defensive pressure by the Saints. They got the ball into Keeley Bake. He fired it off, but really uh, falling to his left. Real low percentage shot, but that was all that was presented. Yeah, well, they were looking for the lob to Belich, and that was taken away. And what one thing they did, they put the big on the guard and took away the basket. That's a tough pass, so they had to go to the perimeter with it. 69 all. Frontier Conference action here with Ordigger Basketball. Thanks for joining us on a Thursday. As we go to overtime, we'll take a quick timeout. We'll go to the overtime period after this. Welcome back here once again as we go to overtime. The Diggs and the Saints knotted up 69 all. Tech shooting 44% from the floor. The big one is only 47% from the free throw line. They were 8 of 17 from the free throw line. You jump that up a few digits and uh, we're done. Free throw line rebound and that's what win games and they're both backwards here. So it's interesting. Dixon. Double team drops to him, moving to his left. Pass goes that way to Aza Williams, now to Belich. Belich, 16 feet away, turns and fires and gets it. Belich has 27. Had him stop and then gave him space. Diggs leading 71 to 69. Braden Cook across the timeline, out to Andrew Cook, far right side. Whistle and a foul, and I believe Dixon going to be called with a hold. You don't want to foul this kid. So Dixon picks up his fourth personal. And that will put Braden Cook at the line. Montana Gatorade Player of the Year, and deservedly so. Yep. That is the deal. So Braden Cook at the line. Front half of the bonus is no good. Wow. Carroll College, 65% from the foul line. Montana Tech, 47% from the foul line. 
Tech leads by two. Big Mike hands it off to Williams. Williams going left. Puts on the brakes. Back up top to Yor. Yor to Decons. His ability to pivot is incredible. Yor has the open three. Mike, no good. Rebound, Creshawn Dixon. Monster board. Huge elevation by Dixon. Montana Tech will readjust. Dixon. Goes left, he has a lane, Dixon to the rack, rolls it in. What a series by Creshawn Dixon. Something to be said for quickness. Four point lead for the Digs, 73-69. Braden Cook calls out the offense. Moving lefts, hands it off there to Temple. Temple drives down the left side of the paint, back to his right. Temple spins, Temple. Taken away, Dixon. Dixon with the steal. Dixon goes up and gets hammered by Hillman. Yeah, he had to foul in the depth. Don't want to give up the free layup, but I'll tell you, that's a tremendous defensive play. He got back. So Hillman picks up his third personal, and Dixon at the line, shooting two. Montana Tech leads by four. Boy, Dixon is having himself an overtime period, and we're 90 seconds into it. Dixon, his first is up and in. Preshawn Dixon. Dixon has nine points on the night, all of those in the second half. Tech's got to guard the three-point line if he makes this one. His second is up and good. Preshawn Dixon, 10 points. Montana Tech leads by six with 326 left to play in overtime. Don't look to go into Temple. They want Cook with the ball in his hands to go one-on-one. -on -one. Braden Cook to Andrew Cook. Andrew far right side. Little shake and bake. Stutter step all the way back up top to Braden. Back to Andrew. Andrew Cook to the baseline. Double team. Puts the shot up off balance. Taken away. Aza Williams. Great that defense. That is two big plays by Aza Williams. Six-point lead for the Diggs. Preshawn Dixon directs traffic. Michael Ewer moving left, hands it off to Williams. 2.50 left to play. Step back, Aza Williams fires, it's up and good. Aza Williams has nine points. Montana Tech by nine. Their biggest lead of the game comes in overtime. I wouldn't let many people do what he just did, but he's one. I watch him work out in here every day. Hillman coast to coast rolls it in. Too easy, too easy. 20 points for Hillman, Tech by seven. 228 left to play here in this third period, or the overtime period, excuse me. Belich moving left. Tried to cut through the double team. It's taken away. And a jump ball will favor the Saints. Yeah, those aren't the kind of mistakes you want in the last two minutes when you got a seven-point lead. So Carroll College will get possession here. And the Saints will inbound in front of the Montana Tech bench. Trailing by 7, 218 left to play. You get us a score update. It's official. Rocky beat Northern. So Western and Northern tied for second, both lost. If Tech wins this, they will win the conference. They will not be caught. Temple spins to his baseline. Temple pump fake once. Bodies up. Michael Yor gets the basket. Boy, Yor is battling hard, but he is getting beat up. Temple has a dozen. Tech by five. Yeah, yours not an aircraft carry. Pretty thin. Around a screen, Aza Williams. Back the right side. Step back. Aza shot good. Aza Williams has a dozen. That is a monster right there. Williams has a dozen all in the second half. Montana Tech goes up by eight. Temple for three, no good. Nope. Rebound, Decons. Definitely not the guy you want shooting your three. They get the ball to their free throw shooter. Preshawn Dixon across midcourts. Dixon back out to Belich. An eight point lead for the Digs. Belich to Yor. Yor has Temple on him. Yor puts on the brakes, double team out to Williams. Shot clock down to eight. Aza. Separation, Asia shot no good, but he's fouled. Williams is gonna shoot three. That iced it right there. That's a, that's a monster play. Boy, Asa Williams, huge second half. Creshawn Dixon, huge second half. He's an impressive kid. I mean, you're talking 21, 22 year, years old, and he's in here every day with the shooting machine or shooting on his own. I come and talk to him every single day. 
So Williams, a junior, will shoot three. His first is up and good. 13 points for Aza Williams. Gets ready for attempt number two. Williams, shot is up and good. Aza Williams, 14 points all in the second half. Tech by 10. Their biggest lead of the game coming in overtime. Braden Cook checks back in. 10-point lead for the Diggs. Yeah, I'm truly interested to see where the freshman of the year is going to go. Because I, I look down and I've got Hayden Decons and, and Braden Cook standing next to each other. Yeah, I think Decons has a step on him, but uh, there, I think there's a couple other good freshmen yeah, in the conference. Exactly. Too. Yeah, it's not a it's not a two horse race. No, not at all. An 11 point lead for the Digs. 15 points for Aza Williams, all in the second half. One minute. The chance starts. Backdoor cut. Andrew Cook rolls it in. 26 points for Andrew Cook. Montana Tech into the offensive zone. Holding on to it, Aza Williams. Double team coming. And they'll get the foul here on the edge. Last time I looked, you don't shoot a guy who just made three in a row. You don't foul a guy yeah. who just made three in a row. He has 15 points all in the second half. And nine of those in overtime. Yeah, they've let, they let him loose this half more than they really bellied up to him in the first half. Aza Williams, 44 seconds remaining in the ball game. And his first tier is up and good. Again, if Montana Tech wins this ball game, they have won the Frontier Conference crown, period. They cannot be caught. Western has beaten Providence, and Rocky has beaten Northern. That gives Tech a three-game cushion with two games left to play. Tech wins this. They're Frontier Conference champions. Carroll College into the offensive side. Andrew Cook, Cook to the baseline. Double team. Ball stripped away. We're going to get a whistle and a stoppage down on the baseline. And I believe we're going to get a foul as the Amani Scott was down there. Most, most people would want to say, why, why did you foul him? Uh, realistically, he had the field goal. If he'd have gotten to the bucket, he's got to shoot. He's got to make two here. So at the line, Andrew Cook, 26 points for him. His first is good. Andrew Cook, 27 points. He's 9 of 9 from the foul line here in the second half. Tech leading by 10, 86 to 76. And again, to reiterate, Montana Tech wins this. They will win the Frontier Conference regular season crown. Well, they came into the ball game leading Northern and also Providence by two games with three games left. Both of those two squads fell tonight. And a win here, they, they roll in. And I had a great conversation with them before our game here tonight. I said, all you got to do is win two, nothing to it. And, of course, he didn't buy into my philosophy. But uh, they took care of business for everything here tonight. Tech's going to get the win. And uh, Western and with the big upset. And Rocky, as far as I'm concerned, with the big upset. Yeah. Boy, and a, what a log jam that creates. Holy moly. So with that, Western goes to five and eight. Rocky goes to five and eight. If Tech beats Carroll here, they'll go to five and eight. Providence goes to seven and six. Northern seven and six, and Tech, Tech will go to ten and three. So it's head-to-head. Uh, -head. Whoever wins the two out of three is going to get the free throw attempt. Number two, no good. Yor gets it off to Dixon. Dixon is finally going to get himself a whistle here. Yeah, he thought he was out in the parking lot being thugged around. <laughs> he got Holy up. man. It took a while to blow that. So Dixon will go to the line here for the digs. Creshawn Dixon, three of four from the free throw line tonight. Tech by 10. Their biggest lead in regulation was six, or check that, eight, excuse me, uh, late in the second half. Dixon's first, rims out, no good. Boy, the free throw line has just not been kind. No, that'll be talked about a little bit. Tex, 60% from the foul line. Carroll, 64% from the foul line. And both teams are good free throw shooting teams. I mean, that's kind of the oddity of the whole thing. It'd be one thing if neither was that good of a free throw shooting team, but 
My goodness, an 11-point lead. Tech does not want to foul and stop the clock. Braden Cook, jumper up and out, no good. Rebound controlled, Carroll. Inside, shot is up. Count it and the foul. As getting that in traffic was Bryant's, and Bryant going to go to the line and shoot one. So the personal foul will be charged to... They have Imani Scott on the board, but that's not the case. He's not on the floor. We'll see where they get this changed here. Oh, no, he is. My apologies. Imani Scott does get his second. I apologize. I didn't think he was on the floor there. Diggs leading 87 to 78. So Carroll will shoot one with 23 seconds remaining. Tech's going to march to the free throw line unless Carroll just backs off and lets the clock run down. But I'm thinking they're going to foul right away. You've got to have your best foul shooters in there. This is just the log jam now is crazy. You have Carroll College, Rocky Mountain College, and Western all going to be tied at five and eight. And that could change with two games on the schedule still for conference. Yep. That could really change. Providence will go to seven and six. And Northern will go to seven and six. So with two games left, all of those teams could move anywhere, in a big way. Anywhere. The only team now that is free of the uh, of the big waves is Montana Tech. Tech with a win here will have a three-game advantage over the other two in Providence and Northern. And they will be Frontier Conference champions. And their home winning streak will continue. They yeah. were up to 27 games. They haven't lost in two years at home. It's just a nice venue to come to. Nice crowd here tonight. 23 seconds remaining here in this overtime period. The digs up 87 to 78. Nobody fighting their way to the cars. They all want to stay for them. Do you want me to? Get on the uh, announcer and tell him the game's over. <laughs> yeah, get tell Tom, will you? The only way it's not well, over is the Tech can't make a free throw. Our friend John Lagerquist saying hi from over to Helena. Hi, John boy. Hello, John. He said to tell you an expletive. I, I'm not going to do that. I'll get that even. would just be rude. I'll I wouldn't. Get, I'll get even with him. I wouldn't do that. So the Digs lead 87 to 78, and we'll look to try and get this thing into the record books here. Montana Tech again. This is senior night. The uh, four seniors were honored between games. They'll finish their season on the road at Providence and then at Northern. Then the Frontier Conference Tournament will be played in Great Falls. And again, Tech fighting for a shot at hosting one of the regionals. Yep. There is a chance we could have four teams here in I've, the first round of the NAIA National Tournament. I think if they win the tournament, they'll get that. And of course, everything's money. How much yep. money you bring yep. to the table. But I'm wondering why they're looking at the monitor. With, uh, they thought the foul was intentional or what? You don't want to shoot two and get the ball. The technical and get the ball back. So the officials are chatting it over here. I'd like I mean, to be down there. I'd like to put a little mouse in between all three of them, listen to what they're saying. I, it, at first, I thought it might be something as easy as clock, but it, with them huddling after that, it's not going to be the case. So the officials telling both coaches about it. So we will shoot a free throw as Bryant will shoot one. Need all your bigs in to you want to clear the board. A nine point lead for the digs. Again, thanks for joining us here on a Thursday. Or Digger Athletics. As we get it sorted out. I, I still am unsure what exactly went on there. Free throw attempt, no good. Rebound, Aza Williams. Doesn't matter. He missed the free throw, so it's over. They're not going to foul. No, this game's over. So the clock will run out, and Montana Tech will get the win. So Montana Tech and Carroll College, the home team, is one that has won 20 of the last 22 meetings, and that holds. And the Digs are Frontier Conference champion regular season champs. So the Diggs will win the Frontier Conference regular season championship with an 87-78 victory over Carroll College here tonight. Outstanding basketball game, and uh, it all comes back to me in one fashion. That they had to be tough, and they were down the stretch. you got to be a street fighter when the games are tough. 
Montana Tech was the greater street fighter here tonight. Tech will go to 10 and three in conference, 22 and four overall. Northern with a loss goes to seven and six. Providence with the loss goes to seven and six. Carroll College with the loss goes to five and eight. Rocky and Western both with wins also go to five and eight in conference. So again, the Digs have a uh, three game advantage with two games left to play. The Montana Tech Ore Diggers have won the Frontier Conference regular season crown. Real tribute because they have been contested every which way. They yeah. would go to Northern and get thumped pretty good and then uh, make a big showing here tonight in a great basketball game. Let's run through the individual numbers. We'll start it off for Carroll College. Leading scorer is Andrew Cook, 27 points for Cook. Uh, behind him, Johnny Hillman with 20 points. Isaiah Moore got a dozen. Brendan Temple with a dozen. And uh, Braden Cook with seven points on the night for the Saints of Carroll College. Again, they go to 5-8 and eight in conference, 11-13 and 13 overall. On the other side for Montana Tech, leading scorer is Caleb Belich, 27 points for Belly. He had 17 in the first half, added 10 to that in the second half, 27 points for the Frontier Conference leading scorer in Caleb Belich. Aza Williams had 17 points all in the second half and what are we looking at here? 3, 6, 9, 11 of those in overtime. Well, you know, we, you and I had talked. Somebody had to step up besides Caleb Bellage yep. after that first half, and Aza Williams was the guy. Kreshawn Dixon gets 11. Hayden Decons with eight points on the night. Keeley Bake with six. Bridger Larson on senior night gets eight points. And Big Mike, seven points for Mike, but I'll tell you, uh, he, he's going to be sore. He got, he, got, he got trucked a couple times, uh, but, boy, he stood his ground, and he battled for the entirety of this game. I can't believe it. There's not much contact out here on no, the floor. No, very little, just very little. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, our final 87-78, to 78, the Digs take down the Saints as we get a split. The, boy, or the uh, men win, and the women uh, for Carroll College get the win over Montana Tech. For John Thatcher, I'm Paul Panisco. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, the Digs will go on the road to finish their season at Providence at Northern, and the best of luck to them as they go on the road to wrap up the regular season. For John Thatcher, I'm Paul Panisco. Take care, and until next time, we'll see you.